Hip-hop is 1987.com. Terrell Thomas, we're live in Atlanta right now. We're at a private ESPN event for the first ranking of the 2016 college football season. And I'm here with ESPN's own Ty McShay. How are you today? I'm doing well. How you doing, man? I'm magnificent. Now, we not we now know the top we not know the top 25, but the first four is out. There's been a few surprises in that mix yeah. as well. Talk to me a little bit about what your, what your thoughts are on the rankings. The biggest surprise to me was at four. You know, I, I actually I thought one, two, and three were, were right where they should be. Clemson, one spot ahead of Michigan, just because of the strength of schedule and the games they played. A and M, I thought for sure was going to be number five. I really, they were better in terms of what they've what they've done so far, the teams they've beaten, uh, than Louisville and Ohio State. But I thought it was, I thought there was those three teams in the race to be the the first team out, not to be in the top four. So. Washington's undefeated. To me, if you've run the gamut to this point, eight, nine games in, and you're undefeated, you should be at number four. But, um, but I understand what the committee was doing, and, and I appreciate that they're putting so much emphasis on strength of schedule and, and how strong the SEC really is. Uh, it'll be a big matchup this weekend in the SEC uh, 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 with uh, uh, Alabama, excuse me, yep. and LSU will be taking place in Baton Rouge. Can you talk to me a little bit about that matchup? Well, I think LSU's loaded, talent-wise. I, I had their first game against Wisconsin. I thought it was going to be an absolute blowout. Paul Chris, the head coach of Wisconsin, was looking over and like, Boy, Fournette, that guy number seven, he's a generational back. Uh, this, the safety, Adams, is as good as I've seen in safety. They're loaded. We're about a year away. We'll see. Hopefully we catch a break. And all of a sudden they, they wind up beating him. So for LSU, it's not about talent. It's about having the right scheme, executing it, playing good team defense, which I think they've started to do a little bit more in the last few weeks. And then catching a break or two on special teams and offense. The problem is while LSU's talented enough, I don't think they're the type of team because they're a power run team and they want to be physical between the tackles. That's what Alabama traditionally has just eaten alive in years past. So I'm not overly hopeful for LSU, but I do know that they're talented enough to pull it off if they can just get a little bit more creative on offense. Ten weeks into the uh, college football season, we, we hear a lot of talk about Lamar Lamar Jackson and uh, the work that he's been doing. You hear some talk about Peppers at Michigan and possibly uh, you know winning the Heisman. Who would be some candidates that you could possibly see bringing home the Heisman Trophy this year? Lamar's won in my mind. No player has, has done more for his team or been more spectac spectacular than Lamar Jackson. And then Peppers is number two. I mean, this guy's playing like nine, ten different positions every single week. It's an offense. He's in the return game. He's covering kicks, which we don't cover a lot on TV. But it's awesome knowing that this guy who's playing 90, 100 plays a game is still going down, busting his tail, covering kicks, getting the ball, scoring touchdowns, and doing all these different things. I, I just think that guy's amazing, and I think his story is awesome. He's been through so much, and he's just he's, he's a special individual. So I, I love Deshaun Watson and a lot of other guys that are in the race, but if it's not Lamar, then it's got to be Peppers. One of the stories so far during the 2016 season has been the, uh, the play of the rookie quarterbacks in the NFL yes. with Carson Wentz, Dak Prescott. We've also seen uh, uh, rookie rookie running back Ezekiel Elliott having success as well. Can you talk to me a little bit about those rookies and what you've seen out of them so far? Wentz doesn't shock me. He comes from the F FCS, but he was a pro-style system. The guy, his dad was a linebacker in college, and he plays quarterback like a linebacker. You know, and he, he's smart, and he picks things up, and he's, he's just quick to absorb. Dak completely surprises me. Not from an, I mean, he's as good intangible wise and, and work ethic and intelligence wise as anyone in that rookie class a year ago. The system he came from, though, is the same system as, like, as Tim Tebow, Alex Smith, all these other guys who have taken two, three, five, six years to develop or just never did. And for him to pick things up as quickly as he has, it speaks a little bit to the offensive line and to having Zeke in the backfield. And the coaching staff is doing a nice job, but he's making throws and decisions that he didn't make. I, I think it's awesome to see because he, he was one of the special individuals and human beings coming out of last year's draft. I'm, I'm really happy to see his success. And as I let you go, could you give me two names that we could possibly be hearing about in the 2017 NFL draft that'll be surprising first round picks? Um, let's go Mitch Trubinsky, the quarterback from UNC. Okay. And um, I'm trying to give you another one that's good. I, 
Let's say, I don't know that Mike Williams from Clemson is a big surprise, but I think he, he's got a chance to be the first wide receiver off the board. Thank you for your time. You got it, bud. Hip Hop's is 1987.com.